And joining us now is a woman who knows the situation all too well. Her father was jailed in Iran, still in prison, sentenced to death last February for so-called corruption on earth. Uh, Giselle Sharmad is with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, your father is a U.S. resident, but a critic of the Iranian regime. Walk us through that situation. What is happening now? What do you know? Yes, uh, good morning to you guys. Um, thanks for having me again. My dad is a U.S. national. He's lived here in America for 20 years, criticizing the Islamic regime, talking to our government and showing them these are terrorists that you're um, dealing with right now and you cannot negotiate with them. This is exactly what my dad was talking about. This is what the Iranian diaspora was warning about. And right now, um, not right now, a month ago when we released five hostages uh, through billions of dollars that we handed to this Islamic regime that is using them and we warned them about this, that will be using them for their terrorist activities, it was already catastrophic that we left Americans behind, like my dad, under the death sentence. My dad didn't travel to Iran. He was kidnapped by these terrorists and taken there and has a death sentence. But right now that the situation is escalating, I don't know how we can save his life. I don't know how we can get the remaining hostages back because um, as soon as the U.S. and Germany and all of these countries stand behind Israel and put pressure on the terrorists, they will retaliate. So if my dad's life was a danger before, if Americans in prison in Iran were a danger before, what do you believe it's right now? It is horrible for them. And I can't believe that we as regular people were right again. We warned the State Department this is what's going to happen yeah. when you hand them $6 billion. The State Department, um, Israeli intelligence, and this is another conversation, but th there was a huge, huge miss uh, as intel-wise. The CIA, um, you think about intel services in Israel that missed the preparation, the planning for what we saw play out in Israel on Saturday. More than 1,200 people, and that number goes up every day, uh, are dead so far. I, I want to play you a sound bite. This is the White House, John Kirby, yesterday, denying Iran's involvement in what we saw play out in Israel over the weekend. Let's listen. Hamas wouldn't have been able to function at all had it not been for propping up by the Iranian regime. But we haven't seen any specific evidence uh, that tells us they were uh, witting involved in the planning uh, or uh, involved in the resourcing and uh, in the training that went into this very complex set of attacks over the weekend. Okay, so again, your father is still in prison right now in Iran, but here we are, uh, six days removed from the attack on Saturday, and the White House is still denying that Iran had any involvement in aiding Hamas. What do you make of that? I it, it is frightening to see the amount of lies that we see from the White House. I'm, I'm, I'm actually shocked to see that the terrorists are more honest than our White House right now, because the terrorists told us, the President Raisi of the Islamic regime, when he came to the U.S., he told us he's going to do with that money whatever he wants, and he did. The Hamas told us several times, Hamas leaders told us they are backed by the Islamic regime. We know the Islamic regime is the world state sponsor of terrorism worldwide. They don't just uh, sponsor Hamas. They control them. We have seen a meeting in Tehran one week before this happened. There was a meeting inside of Tehran with all of the heads of Hamas, Hezbollah, even the Taliban was there. The, uh, the leaders started talking about taking out the Zionists. You don't need intel for that. You can just search the internet. This was on their Twitter feeds. I don't have intel and I knew what was about to happen. Wow. So it is frightening to see that. Yeah, I, I just don't know why the administration isn't talking about this. Um, just quickly, about 15 seconds. Your father was one of those who was not part of that prisoner swap. As we know, he's still in prison. Have you talked to the administration at all since then? Or is there any communication with them? <laughs> they are not communicating with me. I asked them about my dad's death sentence and that he might be executed right now as a penalty from for everything that is happening. They did not respond back to me. They, of course they don't. What can they say? If you can see what that all of this is, is based on what they did, of course they're not communicating with us and they're continuing their lives, unfortunately, online. And it's maddening to, maddening to see that because people's lives are at risk. We have more hostages right now, and I want to just add this, more hostages, American hostages right now in the head 
hands of terrorists, of Hamas. And the Hamas leader just came out and said, well, the Americans have to negotiate with us now because they just negotiated right. with Iran right. getting their, their hostages out. This will not stop until we start waking up to this. Absolutely. We appreciate you being on with us uh, this morning. And uh, we you. wish you and your family and your father the very best. Of course, we're thinking about yes. him. That's $6 billion six days after those terrorist attacks in Israel still remains unfrozen, um, which is another issue that is raising a lot of questions. Uh, Giselle Shermad, thanks so much Thank for being you. with us. We appreciate it. Thank you.